Meanwhile, here's a live look over Southfield this morning, and if your gas tank is sitting on E and you need to gas up the car, you're going to be paying just a little bit less this week. That's because gas prices here in the state of Michigan are going down. Now, the average price of a gallon of regular is $304, $3.04, which is down 12 cents from this time last week. However, if you're in the metro Detroit area, prices are still slightly higher. It'll cost you about $3.17 a gallon to gas up in metro Detroit. And now we go from Southfield all the way up north to Harbor Springs, where while it's not much, you can see some of the trees in northern Michigan are starting to change colors. And it's only a matter of time before those colors sweep across the rest of the state of Michigan and will be full of those fall colors. So let's say good morning to, to local fours for Warren meteorologist Ashley Barrissey. Ashley, one more week of summer. It's going right. to be going to be pretty warm this week. So when can people start to kind of expect to see a little bit more of the fall sweep over the rest yeah. of Michigan? You know, it's a little bit of a guessing game because there are so many factors. And I know we're going to dive into that a little bit more when it comes to the moisture, the temperatures, and even just the lack of daylight that we're about to encounter. As when you get to the autumnal equinox in a week, you have equal daylight and darkness. But here's a look, historically speaking, of when we typically hit the peak color across both the northern part of lower Michigan and the UP. So that would be probably early October up in the UP, um, mid October for up north in the lower peninsula and then here across southeastern Michigan more so late October. Now that is an average all the way up until about 2020. And so this year we had kind of that faux fall, shall we call it, and right around Labor Day where we had a stretch of days that was really cool and we had the crisp nights and I think that kind of gave us a little jump start with the color change and now we're going backward when it comes to temperatures and feeling a bit more August like so the Smoky Mountains puts out a report every year uh, kind of estimating when we're going to see those fall colors and that's what we work with when it comes to our fall foliage forecast and so across Michigan this year we anticipate the UP and northern lower Michigan to reach its peak closer to about October 6th. So that's not a slam dunk date that is absolutely on that date, but it looks like we could be maybe a week or two ahead of schedule, according to those reports coming out. Now here in southeastern Michigan, we might be closer to about October 13th. And as you just saw on that map, we typically trend a little bit later than that. However, I've already started to see some of those changing colors across southeastern Michigan and some of those leaves falling. So I wouldn't be surprised if we were to see the peak color in the middle of the month as opposed to later here in October. But we do do have some summer like weather still in store. So we'll have to see if that kind of slows down the progression that we saw early on this month. Yeah, it has started to actually kind of feel almost like a late push by summer the last few days as it has been warm enough to get the shorts back on and everything. So I know we're going to be kind of riding out this last week of summer <laughs> That's and right. we'll definitely be looking forward to having the fall colors come through. Thank you so much, Ashley. Mm -hmm. You are looking live in Grand Rapids where the shades of orange, red and yellow are starting to pop up on those trees out there. And it's only a matter of time for the trees across the state of Michigan are going to look like this. The different colors showing up across the state and even at some points they can even be seen from space. That's how brilliant they are. And check this out. It's the fall foliage prediction map. This is what the map looked like at the start of the month of September. This is what the map looks like today as we're halfway home through the month. Now, a lot of places in northern Michigan and the UP are starting to see more colors changing. But did you know that there's actually a science behind all this? Well, for more on that, joining me this morning is Deanna Headland. Now, she's a consumer horticulture educator at Michigan State University's Extension. Thanks for talking with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So hey, I'm in Grand Rapids. Oh, you're in Grand Rapids or you're checking yeah. in from Grand yeah. Rapids. So what happens when a leaf starts to change colors. We see this every year and it begins kind of a gradual thing. What actually leads this to happening? It always seems to happen around this time of year. Yeah, so the autumnal foliage color change is really a process. And so the timing of that process is triggered by two main factors. You have the day length, you know, as the days are getting shorter, and then the cooler night temperatures. And so when that process begins, a layer of cells start to form where each leaf is attached to the branch. And the, those layers of cells start to close off the movement of water and minerals to the leaf. So that's kind of sealing off that spot on the branch. And chlorophyll production slows down to a stop. And when chlorophyll, the green pigment that's in the leaf that absorbs light to provide energy for photosynthesis, when the chlorophyll isn't produced, it starts to reveal the other color pigments that have been in the leaf all along. They were just being masked by the chlorophyll. And those are your oranges, yellows, browns, um, pigments called carotenoids. 
Now, the reds and purples are created by anthokinins, a different type of pigment. And not all trees produce these, and they only are produced during certain conditions. So it may not be a complete consensus on this, but they're thought to help protect the trees uh, from the sunlight at that time of year and recover the last bits of nutrients. So those sunny, dry days really increase the sugar concentrations and trigger trees to release those anthokinins to try to produce as much energy as possible. Now, when it comes to the, when it comes to these happening, obviously it's like during the fall tends to be there's this is when a lot of the change that we notice there are different types of trees, obviously. And as you just laid out there, we found out what makes leaves red or orange or yellow. But how do scientists kind of know when the leaves are going to start changing color? There, is there like an ex, is there a way to kind of gauge kind of an approximation of when that happens? Yeah, so it is always around the same time of year, of course, with the days growing shorter. But then the weather plays a large role in the exact timing. So as I mentioned, the cooler night temps start to trigger that process too, which is why you're seeing the colors start shifting further north. And we always see colors um, start to change inland earlier than the lakeshore because the lakeshore temps are more moderate and don't have the cooler nights as quickly. Um, so generally in fall, if you have those dry, sunny days, that's gonna produce the most vibrant colors, um, where rainy days are gonna, um, are more overclassed and cloudy, and that's gonna result in more muted colors. Um, but it's not just the weather during fall that can affect the, the um, color that we're seeing, it's the weather conditions earlier in the year. So if we're having drought conditions like we are in parts of, of um, parts of the state, a central, kind of northern, western part of the state, we have, um, you could have more vibrant colors because of that little bit of stress on the plant, but it, it can be a shorter color display. Um, but then there are times where if you have extreme drought, the trees could just possibly uh, turn brown and drop. Where if you have a wetter spring or summer, you might have some fungal issues that cause certain ornamental species to drop early. So it's really the ideal conditions are just a little bit of stress um, and your drier sunny days going into fall, it's gonna make for the best color. So I just have one more question here. Does sure. the health of the tree matter in terms of when it changes color and how maybe how vibrant that they are? Absolutely. So. A younger tree, it's really about stress. So a younger tree that may have been transplanted, you know, this year, this spring, is still um, having some stress related to, you know, its roots being in cut and changing location. And it's um, that stress may cause the, the color to change a little earlier. And then older trees that have a variety of stresses might change color earlier. So sometimes when you see in August, you see like, you know, one tree, changing color um, to like a bright red, it's usually because it's a stressed condition at that time. And it's really, it can vary by species, but it can vary by the individual plant. So the individual stress that that plant is under. Well, I wanna thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate you coming on here and really enlightening us into the science that goes behind those beautiful fall colors that we see. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jay.